morning, and it's going to be our top story today, the soon-to-be Francine that is churning through the Gulf of Mexico. We have already had an explosive hurricane season for this part of our country. It wasn't too long ago that we got hit by barrel, and in fact, at the beginning of season, we had rain from, you know, our non A-name storm. Yeah, that's right. It's been nonstop. We had Alberto before that. Mm -hmm. The impacts, even though that made landfall in Mexico, extended well into Texas and portions of Louisiana. So Brownsville and also Louisiana, live look this morning. Preparations will begin today. Again, we are expecting this to turn into Francine. It's just a matter of time, which is why it's labeled as a potential tropical cyclone. I feel like this classification, it, it can confuse some folks. Mm. I think the important thing is not to wrap yourself around the naming culture of this. You want to look at the impacts. And the impact timeline, we could feel impacts as early as tomorrow night. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about a 48-hour window here to get preparations done. And that's why we always say, never turn your back on the Gulf of Mexico because uh -huh. once something forms, you do not have a lot of time to prepare. And that's the importance of having this designation. When you have a potential tropical cyclone, it allows the hurricane center to give watches and warnings. That's why we have tropical storm watches out for parts of the Texas coastline this morning. And likely we'll see those expanded as we move throughout this evening. Louisiana are watching closely as well as all of the offices out there. Britta will watch to see what happens with this one. When we take a look at what's changed from 5 to 2 a.m., not a whole lot. The movement continues north northwest at five miles per hour. Pressure still about the same, and winds at about 50 miles per hour. It's kind of an elongated uh, system, if you will. Before well, that's it starts the piece to that we're missing, up. right? Exactly. The winds Until are there. It it's up. the organization that's missing. It's so true. And the hurricane hunters have been going into it. They went into it yesterday. Currently in there right now, Britta. And it's that truth, almost the ground truth, if you will, but not really mm -hmm. if it's from above where they're getting all the samples of the storm that helps us figure out what's going on with the storm. Because we could track it on satellite, but we need to see what the storm itself is doing inside the storm. It is only a matter of time, though. The water is very warm. So eventually this will get a better defined center, and that's when it will become a tropical storm because the winds right now are at 50 miles per hour. The strongest winds are located on the west side, and as Craig said, it's kind of elongated and stretched. So as the center starts to consolidate, it will contract and we'll start to see those strong winds likely spread to the east side of this storm. So a lot of things will be changing. The important thing is that we have a short timeline and we are going to see strong wind, storm surge, and heavy rain element. Right now we have some buoys that are clocking 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts across the open gulf, but the strongest winds not located up by those buoys just yet. Yeah, and you take a look at a place like Brownsville, southern tips of Texas there. You're bracing for a lot of the rain, the strong winds today as well. To the north of it, you got some of that drier area you were talking about, but right mm -hmm. where we're watching in the Bay of Campeche in it's the southern so Gulf, it's perfect conditions for it, right? Exactly. Yeah. That dry air, though, and, and also some here. wind shear that's to the north could be our saving grace because there will be a glass ceiling for how intense this storm can potentially get mm -hmm. as we track the forecast. It's true. Let's talk about the forecast and the direction. We're watching Louisiana as well because of the steering mechanisms that you want to watch by the middle part of the week. That's mm -hmm. going to be that area of high pressure over the Gulf that will help to pick it up and they got a trough coming through as well. So being prepared for this over portions of Louisiana. Here's a look at the storm track. And right over the Gulf, there's going to be an area of high pressure there. Clean, think of that clockwise rotation. Then you've got some energy coming out of Texas, and that's going to help to veer it off to the north and northeast. You're talking about potentially midweek uh, closer to Louisiana, uh, right over anywhere within that cone there. But when you talk about the center of it, that's where you watch for the center of the storm to go. But the impacts go well beyond that, especially on the eastern side of that. And by this time, say Wednesday, Britta, probably maybe on the verge of Category 1 hurricane mm -hmm. Wednesday into Thursday because uh, it's going to sit in that warmer water and the longer it sits, the more intensity it grabs. Yeah, looking at all the computer model runs that came in last night, almost all of them have this reaching hurricane status. Because there's an ill-defined center, there is going to be more air with the computer models as of right now. Mm -hmm. It will improve, but that unfortunately is a piece of this until we have that defined center. And with that, you need to make sure that you're preparing for a category ahead. Every Everyone from southeast Texas to Louisiana should be, be preparing for a hurricane that will be making landfall sometime late Wednesday. Now, for the Texas coastline, most likely this is going to be a just a quick graze. A lot of heavy rain, a wind element, a storm surge element as well. But the biggest mm -hmm. impact and that direct impact looks to be Louisiana. Right now, pretty close to Cameron Parish, Cal mm -hmm. Calcasieu Parish. So we're focusing in on southwest portions of Louisiana, but the whole state will feel impacts. You're talking about rain, but on top of some saturated ground. Eight and to this 12 heavy inches rain, of rain is going right over where Barrel's heaviest rain went. Exactly. So they haven't had much of a break no. really when you think about it. I know it's been some time since that happened, but we've had system after system stall Not 
correct as well. There's not enough time for soil to dry out. Not at all. Here's what we're talking about, the steering mm -hmm. mechanisms, right? There's that area of high pressure we were talking about. Jumped the gun on this one, but you can see that area of low pressure over Texas to help to take that off to the north and northeast. Then you got that dip in the jet as well. Keeping the rain over, say, coastal Texas, all the way to the Florida panhandle, Brutus. So I think this week ahead, mm -hmm. uh, watching for flash flooding yet again. Stall front's not going to help out much at all. And we talked about 8 to 12 inches of rain on top of what has already fallen. We're talking record amounts of rain, top five for many locations as far as September rainfall for a lot of places all across the Gulf Coast states here. So today is the day to prepare, yeah. and we'll just continue to get more information in as we wait for this to really form. That's the missing piece that we're waiting for. So let's take a live look into the Texas coastline this morning, talk about a few of these highlighted areas, because folks that live on the Texas coast and also Louisiana, you got to make moves. Uh, you got to make moves today and tomorrow. Uh, for Texas, I think a lot of the coastline is just going to be a graze. This is going to be right offshore, meaning that the wave action is going to be big. You're going to get the wind element as well. Right now, the winds are at 50 miles per hour. So for it not even being a tropical storm yet, because keep in mind, the defined center is, is missing right now. It, it's not completely closed off and tight and consolidated. But the fact that the winds are so high, that's why these watches are going up and the importance of this being a potential tropical cyclone so the watches can be issued. Tropical storm watches go as far north as Port Mansfield. Again, a lot of the local offices with the National Weather Service office are saying they're expecting their watches to go up later today up the Texas coastline and even Louisiana, mm -hmm. New Orleans and also Baton Rouge advertising that likely they're going to release some flood watches out by the time they get to tomorrow. As we take a look at this track, you got to make sure that you take into account that impacts will be far reaching. Uh, this is just giving you an idea of where the center of the storm is going to be. These impacts will include all of the Texas coastline from Brownsville all the way up to Beaumont. And then we're gonna have an inland impact for the entire state of Louisiana. Here's the flood watches that are already up for South Texas because of course their timeline is shorter. We have flood watches that go from Brownsville all the way up to uh, Riviera and uh, that extends a little bit farther inland over Harlingen. So we're talking about a lot of heavy rain that's going to be located in our coastal counties. That's where we're going to have the flood potential for Texas. Yeah, and a lot of people just getting ready, especially when you talk about uh, getting ready back to school, back mm -hmm. to work, you're making sure you plan everything that you can. Uh, even if you can take a little time off and think about it during the afternoon, rainfall is going Look to be the having off. huge impacts. Right, exactly. You talked about that coastal mm -hmm. graze. There's yeah. a perfect example of it, right, Britta? Mm -hmm. uh, look at that. Brownsville, South Padre Island, five to eight inches of rain. You go in a little bit more. Maybe not quite as much, but you still have some winds to contend with, that's for sure. And the wind will change direction as the system pulls away and moves to the northeast. That's always a concern when you've got the winds changing direction, too. This is now 6 p.m., scattered showers, but look at those strong winds continue to blow in out of the north, northwest. Uh, and then, look, there's some pretty decent rain there Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. morning commute. I think that's when it all starts to add up, Tuesday. So impacts will start tomorrow. Today is the day to prepare. 